There are loads of exporting options in Lightroom Classic. Let's create some presets. Welcome to the Visual Center, I'm Trent. And in today's post-production tips, we're continuing our discussion all about Lightroom Classic, specifically how to export our images. Now, if you're like me, I need to export my images in Lightroom Classic in a number of different formats, depending on what they're gonna be used for. Whether it's printing the image, or it's gonna be put onto social media or on my website, or maybe I need to client proof an image. Now let's create some presets so we can batch process for each one of those scenarios. All right, if you're ready to export an image, there are a few ways you can do that. Either just select this export button here in the library module, and it opens up this export dialog box, or right click on the image and select export, or right click on the film strip on the image and select export, or go up to file, export, or shift command E on a Mac. Now first what you wanna do is select the images you'd like to export. There are a few keystrokes that may help you with this. If I select this first image and wanna select all five of these image on, images on the top row, I can hold down the shift key and click. Now all five of those images are selected ready to export. But if I have images in between the images I wanna select, let's select this number 39, press and hold down shift and select 41. And I wanna select also these other swimming images. Well, I can't just hold down shift because these other images will be also selected. So I'm gonna hold down command and now I can select whatever images I want in between. Your images need to be selected that you wanna export. So either use the keystrokes I just showed you to select a specific set of images or maybe filter by star rating or color label to choose a set of images. You could also just export a collection of photos. Click this video here to see how to create a collection. All right, with those six images selected, let's export them. Select export. Now, if your export dialog box doesn't look like this, some of your dropdowns may be collapsed, like this. Just select this arrow next to the option and you'll drop it down and you reveal all the options within that section. This first one is the export location. So where will these files be exported to? Let's export them to our desktop and put them in a subfolder called swim. This next option is to add these images after they're exported back into our Lightroom catalog. I usually don't do this. I only export my images when I'm ready to use them. I'm ready to upload them to my website or send them to a client. So I don't wanna add them back into my catalog. You can choose to do this if you want, if you're using Lightroom to manage all of the files, including the new exported images. Now, if you do have an existing file with the same name in that folder in the same location, this option will tell Lightroom Classic what to do when that happens. So I just leave it on, ask what to do. Now, the next dropdown is file naming. We can name this whatever we want. I'm gonna create a custom name and let's say, call it Trent and swim. So Trent Bates underscore swim. So this is an example of what that's going to look like. Now this is pretty important. Sometimes the sequence number isn't set to one and it will start from where you last exported your images. So make sure you set that to one. This extension lowercase or uppercase doesn't really matter. Now there's a bunch of options other than this custom settings. I can select a custom name, date and file name, file name and sequence. I can also create my own template for my file name. Now the next dropdown is video. We're not exporting video, so that doesn't matter. We're gonna leave that alone. The next dropdown is file settings. I'm gonna use JPEG since that's the most easily accessible image in this list. I can also select a PSD, a TIFF, PNG, DNG, or my original raw image. I'm gonna leave my quality at 100. Now this color space is going to be dependent on what I'm going to do with the image. Right now, I'm going to leave it at Adobe RGB 1998. Now this color space option, we actually will change in a minute when I talk about creating a preset for a specific type of export. Now the next dropdown is image sizing. I'm not gonna resize my image. It's something again we'll do in a second when I create my presets. But right now I'm gonna leave it the size it is. 
but I am going to change my resolution to be 300 pixels per inch. Now, 300 pixels per inch is an industry standard. Usually it's around 240 to 300. It provides enough resolution so that the human eye can't see the pixels making up the entire image. The next dropdown is output sharpening. I'm not going to sharpen this image. Next is metadata. Now this is pretty important. This is where our copyright information and contact information will be stored and tied to the digital file that we're exporting. So I'm going to select all metadata. I'm not going to remove personal info or remove location info. I don't have that on my photos anyways. Next is watermarking. Now I generally don't use a watermark on my images unless I'm doing a client proof. That way I can send my images to a client and prevent them from using them without paying me or without completing and fulfilling the contract. Last, we have post-processing. If I want to open my image after it's done exporting, I could open it in Photoshop or another application. This is where I would choose to do that. Let's go ahead and select export. All right, here on my desktop, I have my swim folder and those six images I just exported. All right, that was great and fairly easy. But now let's create some presets so we can batch process a single image to three or four different formats to save us some time. All right, so to begin, let's create some presets. I'm gonna to go to export again to export those six photos. And notice here my user presets, I don't have any presets yet. But first, what I'm going to do when selecting my export location, I'm actually going to select choose folder later. And you can see in parentheses, it says useful for presets. I'm creating a preset, so I'm gonna select this. What this allows me to do is it allows me to export the images, but just prior to export, it's going to allow me to select the location. Now, if I use presets for different jobs or different clients or different photos that go in different locations, I'm gonna to wanna to select that location just before the export starts. So this option allows me to do that. Now putting subfolders grayed out because I can actually create subfolders when I select the folder location. Now I'm not gonna add to catalog. I can leave ask what to do. Now file naming, this is where I would actually just select file name and sequence because I take time and create my file names according to the date, the content of the photograph, and my name and then a sequence number. So now I can just select file name and sequence for all of this preset. Now file settings, this first preset, I'm going to export for print. So I'm gonna leave it as a JPEG. And I'm actually gonna use Adobe RGB 1998 because I can do that with the way I print my photos. Now I'm not gonna resize to fit, I want it to be full size. I'm gonna leave my resolution at 300 pixels per inch now I could sharpen for the type of paper. You know, I'm probably gonna use a matte type of paper and I'm gonna do a low sharpen. Now the metadata doesn't matter as much since I'm going to print with this image, but I'm gonna leave the metadata tied to these images. I don't want a watermark and I don't want to open it up after it's exported. So now I'm gonna select add to create a preset. Underneath user presets, I'm going to type in print and this will be my print preset. So let's go ahead and export this so you can see what it looks like. Now, once I select this preset, you can see a lot of my options have been grayed out. So let's go to batch export. And now I can choose where I want these images to go. So select choose and go to desktop. Let's go to swim and create new folder called print. Hit create, hit choose. And now I can double check to make sure that my sequence number starts with the number one. Hit export. Now we can see here on my desktop that my swim folder has a print folder inside of it. And we can see those six images I exported at full size, ready for print. All right, that's how you create a preset. I'm gonna create a couple more based off of specific situations I wanna use with these images. Now this next export preset is going to be for images for my website. So I'm gonna to export to choose folder. I'm not gonna to add to the catalog. I'm not gonna rename, but I am going to change my color space. I'm gonna change it to sRGB. Now I'm gonna change this to sRGB because it's the most widely used color space or maybe even the only color space found online. 
So if, when I look at my images after they're exported, it will give me a good preview of what the colors should look like when they're uploaded to my website. If I didn't do this, the colors probably will be interpreted or changed a little bit to fit within the color space once they're uploaded. Now I am going to resize to fit. I'm going to select long edge and I'm actually going to resize this to 1500 pixels at a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. Now I'm also going to sharpen for a screen. And I'm going to leave that at low. Metadata, I want all my metadata to be included. Because these images are going to be going online, I want that copyright to remain tied to that image. Now no watermarking, I don't want to do any post-processing. I'm going to add this preset and call this website. Hit create. Now let's create the next preset. Export location is going to stay the same. File naming can stay the same. File settings are going to stay the same, but I'm actually going to resize this to 1200 pixels or whatever it needs to be. Sharpen for screen, no watermark. I'm going to add this, and this is actually going to be my social media export. Now let's do one last export preset. Let's do a client proofing export. So I'm actually going to be using a watermark on this preset. All right, export to same setting. So now onto file naming. I'm actually going to create a preset for a specific file name for this export preset. So next to rename to, I'm going to drop that down and select edit. And in front of the file name, I'm actually going to type in client proof. Now I'm going to drop this preset option down and select save current setting as in your preset and type in client proof, create, and select done. And now the file name will begin with client proof. This is another step to help the client realize that they're looking at a proof image and discourage them from using it illegally without fulfilling the contract. Now my image format, I'm still gonna leave as JPEG and still use sRGB. Now I'm going to leave this as sRGB because I can't control where the client is going to view these images, whether it's a client proofing site or via email or just a download link. So I'm going to leave it as sRGB because I know that will help me proof the colors once they're exported to make sure they look okay before I send them to the client. Now resize to fit. I'm going to put this back at 1500 pixels on the long edge. Sharpen for screen. They're probably going to view these images on a screen. Now metadata, make sure that that's still included. Now watermarking, I am actually going to include a watermark now for all of these exported images. Now I don't like the simple copyright watermark if a client's going to be proofing the images. So I'm going to drop this down and select edit watermarks. This is too small for a client proof, I think. The client could now crop this out or someone else could crop this out and still use the images. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the size of this crop. I'm going to uh, get rid of the shadow and I'm going to drop down the opacity. So now I can move this image right here where it says anchor and I could put it across the middle of my image. Now there's no missing that copyright. You could also use a graphic copyright if you have one that you've made. Let me show how you do that. So here at the top, I can select watermark style and select graphic. This is a PNG with the Visual Center's logo. Select choose. I can do the same thing that I just did with the text. I can do it with this graphic watermark. I'm going to go back to text. So now it says copyright Trent Bates. I'm going to select save and this will be the new preset called client proof. Hit create and now all these images will come with that client proof watermark applied to them when I export. I'm going to select add and title this preset client proof and set, hit select. Now the great part about this is I can select all of these presets at the same time and batch process an image. Let me show you how that looks. So all I need to do now is select each box and select batch export. 
Now what's going to happen is this batch export dialog box will appear. It's going to ask me for my destination for my print export, my website export, my social export, and my client proof export. So let's choose this print export. Let's go to desktop and we'll call this swim test. Within swim test, I'm going to type in a create a print folder and choose. I'm going to create a website folder, choose my social. I'm going to create a social folder. And then last but not least, I'm going to choose or create a client proofing folder. Create, select choose, and now select export. You can see the status of all those operations that are in progress for this export. All right, that export is now completed. Let's take a look at this folder on my desktop. I have my client proofing images, my print image, my social images, and my website images. Let's take a look at the copyright on the client proofing images. These are the smaller images for social media. And these are the full size images with Adobe RGB for printing. All right, hopefully now you can see how you could save loads of time by batch exporting and using presets. If you do have any questions or difficulties doing this process, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.